Hey guys, and welcome back to the Hot Tea Channel, where we spill tea left, right, and everywhere in between. Before we spill the tea today, don't forget to follow the Hot Tea Channel's new Instagram where you can sip the tea as it spills. Tana and Jeff were on a little couple's vacay to New York this week. Just kidding, they're just friends, but whatever. They went to New York together recently, and now they're back on the pod, and they discussed the news of the Queen passing. Kyle woke me up with a text saying that the Queen died. I thought he was talking about you at first, because I'm like, wait, who's, <laughs> who's the Queen? Our slaying Queen over here. I thought te- you were saying Tana died. With that recent trip to New York together, Jeff was looking at it as a test of how well him and Tana actually get along. Well, I'll be putting out a vlog. It'll be out by now, mm-hmm. and it's a nice bonding trip with me and the boys. And it's not fair that I always go on these bonding trips with him. This is like a chemistry trip for us. I'm, I'm looking at it as. You're right. This is a chemistry trip. Like, we're going to see how well we travel together. Yeah. Even though it has become a regular thing for Tana and Jeff to do these podcast episodes together, they usually only do it like once a month. And now this is back to back, first time. Super back to back. Are we going to run out of shit to talk about? I don't think so. Do you have to line up topics? I don't think so. I don't think they will be running out of things to talk about anytime soon either, to be honest. And as for the chemistry together while traveling, well, that vlog isn't up yet, so it seems I can't report on that just yet. But possibly that chemistry has already been determined, and the collab that we all, or is it just me, have been waiting for could be here. Well, Jeff, are we going to tell him that you're about to be on OnlyFans too? What? Well, I don't... I might have been I might have been sarcastic when I was saying that I'm, I was doing that. You're telling me you blue balled me? You're not gonna fucking you're not gonna go on my OnlyFans? We say Jeff w- told me that this weekend in New York he would shoot my OnlyFans for me and we would we would package up a barbershop X Tana uncensored collab. Oh, okay, never mind then. But regardless of anything romantic between them that I may be manifesting out of pure personal obsession, the friendship that Tana and Jeff have is obviously real. And you guys remember how I kind of recently Tana went to David Dobrik's birthday party and we were all like, whoa, aren't you supposed to be besties with Jeff Tana? Hello? And they kind of talked about it and at least on camera, Jeff didn't seem too phased by that. Well, this clip might just be proof that Tana has officially dropped her friendship with David. Well, this is the type of friends that you need. This is like when you told me that you weren't going to those fucking parties over there anymore, that was, it's like the same shit. Like you backed me up. It's a big deal when you said that to me. While the podcast with Jeff and Tana seems to almost get better and better every time they film, I guess some of their audience sees a past podcast's vibe within their show. Do you think so? A lot of the comments say that our energy replaces the void that frenemies filled. Yeah. You, you see those, I'm sure. I disagree. I just do. I don't see or feel frenemies in the Tana and Jeff show, but that's not to say it isn't good. It's just frenemies was almost like a disaster, but like a good one. Like you can't look away. Like not good, but you can't look away. It was much more on the edge of your seat each time because Trisha and Ethan really didn't get along a lot of the times, and then they did sometimes, and that was what made it frenemies. Tana and Jeff, while entertaining for sure, they're just friends, and I couldn't see them getting explosively angry at each other. It's just a totally different dynamic. But the news of TanaCon 2 that we talked about? Basically confirmed. TanaCon 2 is going to come in 2023, though, really? so don't speak too soon. Have you announced that yet? The I, had a, meeting, that I, was I like, had a meeting this weekend oh, yeah. about TanaCon 2. It's, it's a potential. It's, a, it's an offer. Let's do it. I'll co-do it with you. What do we think about that, guys? So what's the deal? You're going to throw another TanaCon? <sighs> I don't know. Because it, co- it could be the dumbest thing I ever do. Or it could be the smartest thing I ever do. There's only one way to find out. <laughs> <laughs> so are we going? Who's down for TanaCon 2 in 2023? Tana says that there have been quite a few people who have reached out to her about redoing TanaCon, but this current person she's talking to about it is the only one that makes sense and seems that they will be able to do it properly. It can't get worse. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, well, what I'm, do you got to lose Ambulances now? on standby, sunscreen sponsors, tented outside. Yeah, we'll get a few Segways ambulances for everybody. There. Don't get that guy involved that you had last time. Thank you so much for that groundbreaking. <laughs> Even though there is always a hint of a joke in Tana's voice when she talks about basically anything, I really don't think that she would ever consider doing another convention without making sure that it was 100% set up correctly with everything exactly how it needs to be. I picture her doing extra just to be sure that the situation is as far away from the last time as humanly possible. But let's wait and see what the Tana Con tea is when more details are released. Let's move on to the huge Ray J, Kim Kardashian, and Chris Jenner drama. I'm going to give you a full rundown and quickly, and best believe this is everything but just bite size. 
So everyone is aware of the alleged leaked sex tape between Ray J and Kim Kardashian back in 2003, right? It kind of put Kim on the map and really projected her career in the spotlight forward. Well, cut to this year, during the most recent season of Keeping Up With The Kardashians, Kim's son Saint, who's six years old, came across a link on the internet that had a parent unseen footage from that sex tape. During another episode from that season of Keeping Up With The Kardashians, Kanye flew to LA to get some hard drives from Ray J and apparently met him at the airport. Well, after the season of Keeping Up With The Kardashians aired, Ray J wasn't too pleased with the way that the story was spun. Hollywood Unlocked posted a clip of the episode to their Instagram and Ray J commented saying, all of this is a lie shaking my head, can't let them do this anymore, so untrue. A while later, Ray J said in an interview that this supposed meeting with Kanye at the airport did not happen the way that it was illustrated on the Kardashians show. He said, quote, I've sat in the shadows for over 14 years, allowing the Kardashians to use my name, abuse my name, make millions over a decade and a half, talking about a topic that I have never really spoken about. Apparently, Kim had possession of these tapes the entire time, and the only thing that Ray J had was some pictures and text messages that he ended up giving to Kanye later on. He also spilled the tea on Kris Jenner, saying that she basically created this whole thing and leaked the tapes herself and also tried to make Ray J seem like the bad guy on the show. He said, quote, I've never leaked anything. I never leaked a sex tape in my life. It has never been a leak. It's always been a deal and partnership between Kris Jenner, Kim, and me, and we've always been partners since the beginning of this thing. According to Ray J, production company Vivid Entertainment were the ones that arranged to release this sex tape, and there was a contract that both Ray J and Kim signed that required three videos. As we know, only one tape was released, but according to Ray J, Kim had the other two tapes the entire time. He also shared receipts on this, and there's a lot, so I'll throw them up here so you can pause to read. But within those messages, Ray J calls Kim out saying, you know what we did, your mum controlled this whole sex tape deal. Then, Kris Jenner made an appearance on The Late Late Show with James Corden, and they were doing a lie detector test where James asked Kris a bunch of questions, one of them being, did you help Kim release the sex tape? Chris answered no, and the lie detector said that that was the truth. But then, Ray J went live and started posting about all of this, doubling down on what he had initially said. You have fucked with the wrong black person. I was just gonna handle this shit legally, right? And just hit you in court and just get what I'm deserved from all of y'all being foul and trying to defame me, trying to make me look bad. When you know what's up. Clearly furious that the story has been that Ray J was this bad guy that leaked a sex tape, he is now unhinged on the matter, and quite frankly, rightfully so. We going through receipts tonight, Chris. We going through receipts tonight, Kim. Everything that I got. I'm gonna let him see. Along with this video, Ray J also posted a long caption detailing everything and really showing how angry he is about this situation. Again, super long, so here it is for you to pause and read at your leisure. But get this. This gets crazier. Turns out that Chris's involvement with this sex tape was so much more than it just having happened and her deciding to leak it. Her mama made us go shoot it for safety. She watched the motherfucker and said, hey, we're going to go with the first one because the first one is better. It gives my daughter a better look than the second one that I made y'all go do. But you watched it and made a decision. Chris not just watched these, but also critiqued and chose the best one. Are you kidding me? Ray J continues in that video saying that his main concern is the opinions and respect from his children and nothing else. Y'all tried to fuck every black person that y'all been fucking with and put them in the ground. Like it just ruined their career. You, you can't talk about, I, I changed Pete's life. That's been acting all his life and on SNL, but now you God. You break up with him and you feel like you hurt him because you God. Ray J talks about how because of these allegations that the Kardashians put out there of him leaking this tape, that he had to explain himself in a professional capacity. He also says that all of this was basically so the Kardashians could get views on their show and that's it. Because y'all wanna have fun and get ratings. That sex tape shit y'all did on Hulu was the highest rated Hulu ever got on my demise though. And then you just laugh about it. As for the legality of everything, it seems that Kris Jenner was trying to keep Ray J scared by referring to this contract and saying that he should remain quiet about all of this, which Ray J did for a very long time. But after he had a look at that contract again, 
seemingly because he was sick of being painted as the bad guy by the Kardashians, it turns out that there is nothing in there about keeping it to himself. So he says he is tired of all this and will not be silent anymore. He also says that this really has caused some problems in his personal life, and while it might seem small, because of this situation with the supposed sex tape leak on his behalf, girls don't want to send him naked pictures. He also pulls out the Kanye receipts. I'm not kidding. Here's me and Kanye. Look how much me and Kanye talking. Look at all that. All right. Yo, it's Ye. I spoke to Wack and he said you still have some tapes. I need to get those back and contracts. Like, he need to get the contracts back too? I will save you a little bit from these videos from Ray J as they are all over the place. It's honestly a recipe for motion sickness. But he goes through all of these text messages with Kanye, right? He shows that he's telling Kanye that he's on his side and just wants to clear his name up for the sake of the kids. Give a fuck. Let's put it all to rest, bro. I'm in the hospital. God wants this to happen. Absolutely. Let's hop on when you get out the hospital. My bad. I just woke up. Look, look, look how much we talking, though. This ain't what they, how they protect, bro, how they make me look like. They don't make it look like we talking like this. They make it look like I'm just a terrible person. Ray J says that whether he shows this now or shows this in court, it really doesn't matter because the Kardashians can no longer run from the truth. And I guess as further evidence or another point that is a good one, Ray J says that if it was leaked, why didn't Kim sue him? She has sued in the past with no problem, so why not Ray J? Ray J is serious about this, and honestly, fair enough. He's so serious that he brought up the contract to take a look. There go the sex tape contract. There, there it is. There's the whole thing, right? That's the set. That's my handwriting. That's it, right? This is the sex tape full contract. They done already breached the contract by talking about it. But this doesn't stop there. Oh no, Ray J keeps going and spills the tea on Kim signing for him. Here's my handwriting. If y'all Google Kim Kardashian's handwriting, in every contract, you gotta have deliverable. She's like, hurry up, babe. Matter of fact, I'll go ahead and help you. So Kim signs the deliverable. She fucked up and, and got mine out the way too. Look who wrote exactly what we sold. He pulls up some evidence showing that it is really Kim's handwriting and that she was the one who signed these deliverables for sure on his behalf. Ray J mentions that it's crazy the amount of times Kim was crying and doing all of this acting when it came to the sex tape leak, when in all reality, she was at the head of the whole situation. Her and Chris completely fabricated this entire thing. With all the things that have happened in 2022, even though I think we all kind of knew deep down that this tape was fake, I did not see this coming. But for now, that's actually going to be it for today's video, you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and before you go, don't forget to leave this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the Hot Tea channel, and hit the notification bell and follow the hot tea channel's new instagram where you can sip the tea as it spills for now let's enjoy some eye bleach together and just relax